South Africa has the largest HIV AIDS infection rate in the world with 7.9 million people living with HIV. Uh, Professor Lewin is the founding director of the Doherty Institute and, with Mark Dybul, co-leads a cure initiative under the auspices of the International AIDS Society. She talks exclusively to James Chow about the disease in Africa, but also solutions that the continent can implement. You hold multiple roles. And in them, you travel to sub-Saharan Africa, still the region that holds the most number of people living with HIV than anywhere else in the world. But when we look at solutions, these are still largely being built outside of Africa entirely. Does that dynamic need to change if the people, or at least some of the people it's for, are in that region? Absolutely. I mean, 80% of people living with HIV are in sub-Saharan Africa, and that's where we will most urgently need a cure. So to involve people living with HIV and scientists in Africa in um, both research and clinical trials, allowing their communities to understand what we're doing is absolutely critical. So some of my work has been around um, training and mentoring researchers from countries across Africa who are starting to do cure research. And more recently, we've been doing a lot of work with community advocates as well. Because what we've learned from HIV is if we've got the, the, a strong voice from the community can make a big difference to how quickly research can be accelerated. You are a clinician, scientist, activist. I'm just wondering with Chinese and African political leaders gathering for FOCAC, are they aware of the cutting edge on the cusp work that people like you do and how could they best support, push that even further? I think. China certainly has enormous amounts to offer in this search for both a cure and a vaccine. For a long time, there's been a lot of work and leadership from China on an HIV vaccine. And most recently, I was at a meeting in Beijing discussing what role China might play in cure research. So if we could bridge that link between China and Africa on doing more work in these two fundamental areas, a vaccine for HIV and a cure, could be a very powerful relationship. Hard to believe, but it's exactly a hundred years this year since the outbreak of the Spanish influenza. And yet in this year, infectious diseases are still at the core of many of the world's human emergencies. The frequency of that, is that making us emotionally immune to them? I think with Ebola recently and then Zika, there's an increasing awareness that infectious diseases are not going away. And many governments are now investing heavily into making sure their countries and high and low income countries are prepared. And I think if anything, what we worry most about, about what could be the next great emergency, I still think flu is up there above anything else. So as you say, a hundred years later, we still don't have the tools to adequately respond to um, a new strain of flu. And we need a lot more work, both in preparing the response, in understanding those and tracking new strains of flu and ultimately having much better vaccines.